Hey everybody, welcome back to D&D Beyond. Uh, I'm Joe, more importantly joined by Kaylee Bray today. Hey Kaylee, what's up? Hello, how's it going? I'm hey. so excited to be oh, here. It's, it's okay, it's good, I'm good. Of course, uh, by Kaylee Bray, I mean Pixel Circus's Kaylee Bray. I mean Hyper RPG's Kaylee Bray. I mean D&D on a Cruise's Kaylee Bray. Uh, uh, the world's Kaylee Bray. I'm so excited that you're here. Uh, largely <laughs> because... Um, we, we wanted to start uh, getting into best builds uh, for multi-classing. So we've covered, you know, character 101s, like pretty much like across the board. Uh, there's a couple of subclasses I think we're still catching up on. And now we're going to start moving into multi-classing. Um, I am not the most mechanically minded D&D player. I'm very like thematic and like, which one will help me do free therapy best? Um, so I, I wanted to uh, really take this opportunity uh, with a really incredible uh, DM slash D&D player, like Miss Kaylee Bray, uh, to actually dig into my home game artificer, uh, Radwell Nert. Uh, he is a level nine halfling uh, artificer. And I want to start multi-classing him. So I thought this would be a, like a cool place uh, to start this like sort of new 101 series on multi-classing. Um, what we're gonna do is sort of like walk through Kaylee's suggestions of like when to start multi-classing an artificer, first of all. And then we're gonna sort of do two builds. One's sort of like a, a, a tank slash damage dealer. And then the other one will sort of be utility slash healing, which I know aren't like perfect splits, but for, uh, for length of video, uh, that that that's the approach. Uh, otherwise, we could be here for a very long time. We could do a very long forty-eight hour charity stream on uh, all the ways to uh, to to build this to build this artificer out. Um, so that oh, said, that let me today? bring. Oh, yeah. Is that not you cleared your day? You cleared oh, your day, you, right? Yeah, I cleared oh, for the next two days for this. I thought we were just gonna. Oh, thank that. Lord. Yeah, no. Get uh, yeah. get out your best bathroom jug and let's go, Kaylee. Um, ah! You don't have a. You don't have a. You don't have a bathroom jug? Just me? I don't have um, the requisite plumbing. So, uh... Fair. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you just get a slightly more complicated uh, bathroom jug. That's all. Let's not talk about That's bathroom true. jugs. Let's talk about multi-classic. Special Why magic item closer? coming to d d Beyond very soon. Yes, coming. Uh, they didn't know when they hired me that they would get the sentence, but enough about bathroom jugs. Um, so, Kaylee... Meet Radwell, Radwell, meet Kaylee. Uh, so he is, he just hit level nine. Um, and I am trying to, now I have a DM who's very just fun and very chill. And so whatever sort of approach we take on this, he'll go, cool, are you having fun? And I'll go, yes, and he'll go, cool. Um, so he's currently at level nine. What do you think is probably the best time to start like multi-classing an artificer uh well okay again i also not necessarily the most like crunchy min maxi kind of a human it's a fun like brain exercise for me but if i mm -hmm. am gonna build a character it is usually for story but like especially with something like an artificer and it's really important to me too to um open up the opportunity or make suggestions for like, if you want to start multi-classing early, if you want to try something a little bit more complicated, I never want to stop a player from doing that at lower level. So like, I would say you can start multi-classing using an artificer as early as level four. Like I would. Okay, cool. Yeah. I would probably stick to something like a rogue artificer mix or a wizard artificer mix, like something where you can just like dip into something just to try it. I would say right. it's most like optimized at like nine or 10. Like that would be where it would actually start to become like useful, like really useful. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, let's, let's, let's stick with around nine or 10. Cause that's where he's at. Yeah. And so uh, nine, that gives would... him, yeah, he's at nine. So he's got, you know, that flash of genius at level seven. He's got his armor model uh, at third level. Um, and you know, all that good stuff. So he's got like some of his really like fun things that make an artificer, uh, you know, an artificer. He's got some yeah. of that good artificer DNA. We love that. Um, I mean, and how long have you been playing? Uh, how long have you been playing him? 
Uh, we are a, a couple of months into our campaign now. He is uh, he's my character for uh, Icewind Dale, Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Oh, nice, 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 nice. Yeah, he's uh, um, he he is uh, formerly a noble from Baldur's Gate. Uh, he got caught um, uh, in bed with the wrong rival noble family's head of house's mistress and got chased out of town. And so he is basically, uh, he's hiding out in the ten towns. Uh, and he's very sort of like, uh, you know, he, 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 he's, he's brought all of his baggage from Baldur's Gate with him. So, you know, like building alliances and networks and security right. so that he's untouchable. And uh, so, yeah, he's very into making uh, allies out of enemies and, you know, all that, all that kind of good stuff, which drives our DM insane because usually out of no matter what we fight, we normally end up with at least like one friend. <laughs> oh no! Wait, you adopted another NPC. Yeah. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Oh, we have a house of them. Oh, our our game because we uh uh we we bought a, a tavern, um, and uh, it absolutely looks like the third act of a Final Fantasy airship, where just like everyone is walking around and you can go check in. Amazing. Uh, well then, I guess my question to you, because like I have some ideas, but my question to you is, in playing him and getting up to level nine, is there anything that you feel like is missing that you wish you had more access to? Like when I think about something like an artificer, I think about things like action economy. I think about things like mm -hmm. uh, being able to be more effective from far away or up close. Like like what's your play style with with him? Like, are you kind of a distant zappy range human or, or no? Um, halfling. Halfling. Um, halfling. Halfling. Um, so yeah. I think uh, that's a really good question. I think um, the way he gets played, he's maybe by necessity and maybe also just because I, I find it fun. He get, he He's on the front line rather a lot. Um, mm -hmm. He has a... Um, uh, one of his infusions is um, a, uh, a short sword that uh, that I sort of like run as like one of those war forged arm blades, so it like pops Ooh, out love that. of his uh, of his gauntlet. Yeah, and so he um, actually ends up. Let me find it so I can find it. You know, it has like a a radiant effect and some cool stuff like that. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Yeah, here we go. So it's yeah, this is one of his infusions. Um, it has a, a, a radiant uh, weapon bonus, which I really, really like. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. you know, utility is like a nice flashlight. And then also it's it's got some uh, some really cool, like extra just like oomph to it, too. So he does end up frontline a lot. Um, also by necessity, because his other two party members are both rogues. So they're both they right. both tend to, uh, you know, be sneaky. Uh, with a lot of range damage, so he's usually in the front, uh, soaking up damage. So I think maybe maybe if we were going to lean him more towards either, um, yeah, I, I can soak up damage, or uh, I'm I'm a magical sword boy. Yeah. So then, because normally I I think of artificers as a good mix with rogues and wizards because then they don't need to get up close. But if you're already used to, especially as an armorer just kind of soaking mm -hmm. up all of the damage, I would maybe go fighter so that you can get that action surge and um, incorporate like a homunculus too. So you can um, use some of like you know, those, those touch spells that you would normally need, but from another direction or add a different um, enemy. So you can kind of split your attention and then you've got multiple actions to use different infusions, use your weapons, uh buff other players like as a as an artificer you can do so many things and so having the option as a fighter to action surge and give yourself more opportunity to do those things is I'm normal, that is, might be what bit. i would do it would be that or maybe a pally so that you can just head stack on smite damage on top of everything else true and you know i know just, that uh we were right. the goal was to sort of like go strictly like crunchy but i i think i like just thematically for this guy i i think fighter is the easier bridge to cross than than a paladin um right. so I, I i think i dig that fighter idea 
Um, I would do like six we give artificer, them... three three pally or a uh, fighter, so that you get most, or you could do either or really. Um, mm -hmm. You get to keep most of your artificer stuff. I think you just lose that level seven um, mass flash, thing which is yeah. Yeah, which is okay. So you said a, a level three in fighter and and six in artificer. Six. Still get most of the good stuff for artificer. Um, right. And fighter, and then I mean, it kind of depends on what kind of fighter you want to be. If you think you're going to be using things like maneuvers, you could do uh, battle master. Um. I think for fighting style, I'm going to go, I like dueling just because he's got that one blade. Um, dueling. And so then I would say either Battlemaster uh, or Champion as an archetype. Okay, cool. Battlemaster or what was the second one? Or Champion, maybe, for archetype. Hmm. Let's, well, let's take a look. Let's take a look here at, uh, at old Battlemaster. Okay, yeah, so this gives us uh, his maneuvers, those, like, which is... Yeah. Sick. Yeah. And uh, and then for flavor, I also just like um, uh, student of war is uh, is pretty cool because he is kind of like a weird like never sleeps kind of tinkerer. Yeah, so that's and actually this feels like it fun fits too. really well. Yeah, story wise with with this character too, which is literally always my priority. Yeah. No. It. Yeah. No. I, I like this. It really, really does. And honestly, I have not messed with Battlemaster uh, all oh, that much. You can, so like, what trip are your, people, um, you can disarm them, you can, I'm listening. Uh, you, it's, you, it just, it adds so many different op options, because um, too often I feel like fighters get, like, shunted off to the side, like, oh yeah, yeah, bashy, bashy, done. Like, as a Battlemaster, mm -hmm. you can, uh, like, it, you can really work together like as a group. It's really strategy based, especially if you're getting in there. You can trip somebody and then go, and then the rogue gets, uh, you know, can go in and stab them, and then they get advantage on that attack. Like you can really work as a unit, like a soldier. That's actually really dope. Uh, so, do you have uh, any maneuvers that you uh, would prefer? Let me look at that. What are the ones that I use all the time? Because I do like that idea of him sort of being able to uh, get up there and like set up attacks for uh, for two rogues uh, attacking at range is is a uh, is a pretty fun idea. I kind of dig that. Yeah. Oh wow, it's so fun. Um, will you open the list up? I need to. I just need to remember what. There's so many of them. I need to remember what they are. Absolutely. Yeah. Here we go. We've got ambush, bait and switch, brace. Commander Strike, Commanding Presence. Yeah, and these are honestly, like, I have never really messed with Battlemaster, so this is oh, kind of so new fun. territory for me. It's so fun. Um, it's been a while for me since Battlemaster, but... Um, oh, no worries. So, so we've got... It depends on whether you want to use them to buff your teammates or debuff mm -hmm. your enemies. Because I, it's really, it's always really fun to just um, to either distract something so that uh, a rogue can have advantage on an attack uh, or take away their weapon. Um, I dig can, like, that. You know, grapple, let's go with. You can move them around. Let's go with that. Yeah, let's go with like he's there to sort of debuff and distract because I like the idea of um, a literal like glowy armored halfling just standing out in the middle of an open field as bait. Uh, that's a really fun concept and idea to me. So let, let's go with that angle when we're picking maneuvers. Yeah, so I would say trip attack is a good one. Uh, Definitely want to sweep the leg. I like that. Yeah, like the sweeping attack is really, really fun. Um, tactical assessment's great because it uses your intelligence. And as an artificer, that's like your, your moment. So you can... Um, Add oh, superiority dies to to ability checks. To your ability check, that's uh, pretty sweet. Yeah, I like that. You can also like depending on I don't especially for Icewind Dale. I don't know how uh, much you deal with like difficult terrain. Um, 
in combat, I imagine fairly frequently. You can also take a pushing attack, and so you can push people like across ice or over cliffs and stuff, which is uh, sometimes really fun to use for oh, like that's flavor very fun. Like using using the environment yeah. uh, for combat, which is something that we've talked about before. Oh, I absolutely dig that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like tossing somebody uh, into a frozen lake or onto thin ice or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And I'm I dig pretty sure you can a bit. swap out maneuvers. Maybe. Oh, I no. think, um, I think that might, I think that was a home rule. That was like a homebrew rule. That was like one of those things where like you could swap out maneuvers like spells, um, which doesn't always story make sense, but it was something that we did as like a house rule. Um, but you can add, you, you add more when you level up. Yeah. And you know, honestly, I think that's, especially if you have like a group that is playing for the first time, you know, and just like learning things. I think that's perfectly cool as like a DM, you know, you're like, yeah. And during your long rest, you guys were training and sparring and you kind of like learned this new maneuver. And um, so that's the, yeah, that's the one you sort of got on your page for now. I know I would definitely appreciate being able to do that. Um, yeah, you know, it's fun. Just, um, so I would say, yeah. like I said, never played a battle master. So, you know, I want to be able to like actually like put this stuff into play and kind of figure out how it works. Mm -hmm. I would say like the best ones, if you're a frontline human or frontline player, um, is trip distract and like tactical assessment is good. If you need bonuses for ability checks, um, I know you like the sweep the leg, um, Yep, got to Cobra Kai it a little bit. Yeah, that's a fun one. Um, you can also use evasive footwork if, although, like, if you're soaking up damage, that's less of the, less of the issue. Um, yeah. Although that's just an extra soak stuff. if they can't hit me. Yeah, I like that sweeping tag. Yeah. yeah, distracting strike. When you hit a creature with a weapon attack, you can expend one superior to die to distract the creature giving your allies an opening that's exactly what we've been sort of talking about i absolutely love that uh you can add that die to the attack damages roll the next attack roll against the target by an attacker other than you has an advantage if the attack is made before the start of your next turn yeah that's dope and and what that's, are the roguish uh, archetypes because if they have advantage that that means that they'll get their sneak attack right yeah yeah or and they both yeah one, they both one of the rogues yeah, they they both definitely roll sneak attack a lot. We definitely depend on it quite a bit. So, yeah, no, this is cool. Uh, and what I love about this, Kaylee, is, you know, we were sort of talking about like, okay, like what are our two versions going to be? You know, our, uh, our, tanky, our tanky fighter and our utility healer. And you kind of gave me uh, um, a bit of a, like a utility fighter, which I, which I really, really dig. Uh, which is going to be super fun uh, for this guy. He um, just flavor wise, he has sort of like an arcane focus built into his chest armor and he has like a little wheel that he turns over it. And uh, the wheel is like a clock face of runes that cast different spells. So he just like cranks the appropriate rune over the arcane focus. Um, so yeah, I dig this guy, like just like dueling on a battlefield, tripping people up every now and then cranking to, you know, firebolt, firing one off. Um, yeah, no, I, I dig this. This is a really cool fighter build. And remind me, cause homunculus, the homunculus, when you have, do you play with one? You, I you don't make a actually. Homunculus often? I don't, you know, what's, you know, what's interesting is, um, artificer this, so this is my first time playing an artificer in, in a game and hot dang, they're strong. Um, to the point where sometimes I feel like I'm cheating a little bit. And the one time we started messing with an artificer was like the one time that I actually started to see myself trying my DM's patience a little bit. <laughs> and so I, I was like, you know what? I feel bad. So I, I got rid of, uh, I, I got rid of my, my, uh, my homunculus, but I, you were starting to get into the idea of a strategy where it's sort of like working in tandem with, uh with radwell like as he fights with his sword so i'd love to hear about your ideas on that right let me try and i'm trying to pull up the homunculus because i'm trying to remember um if it takes a bonus action to tell it what to do 
I believe yeah, he, let me look him up is. as well, but I believe he, pref his, he just takes his turn after mine. Kind of like yeah, a druid. Yeah, so it can move and use its reaction on its own, but the only action is dodge, uh, unless you take a bonus action to command it to take another action. Okay. So the things about the homunculus that's really great is it can, if you have a touch spell, you can make it cast that touch spell from wherever you are. So if you need yeah. a bonus action for something else, um, or if you need another action for something else, you can use your bonus action to tell the, humo the homunculus servant to cast one of your touch spells. But then which if you want really, more actions, you, know, it, you can do an action search. Yeah, which is really cool. You know, if we're uh, if if there's a dramatic retreat or something like that going on, uh, and having that homunculus like cast spider climb or or jump or something like that on a uh, on a party member to help them get out of dodge you know while i'm uh while radwell's sort of like a holding off the hordes is uh is is super fun uh so that's actually really really cool it's not honestly it's not even something i had thought about like oh yeah, yeah yeah he can just be sword fighting and then his homunculus is kind of doing its thing yeah, so it can, and your homunculus can be responsible for any party buffs too, which as an artificer you have access to, you know, yeah, like things like Expeditious Retreat or Jump or um, stuff like that. Uh, I even think that artificers have access to some healing spells too. I lose track because I started with the UA and I was like playing like really leaning hard into the Alchemist UA and then they changed right. like everything about it. And I was sad and it was because it was incredibly unbalanced and uh, like they had to fix a lot of balance issues because it was it would have been it was very hard to DM. But as a player, it was like, I just throw it and it works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait, I can time. Yeah. Yeah. Acid heat metal, heat metal always. Uh, I, I love that the, the moment I realized I had access to heat metal, I was uh, I was very, very excited. You can make your homunculus um, first, cast heat. It just zips to every every enemy and cast heat metal. <laughs> just go doo, 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 doo. You just introduced the concept of chaining heat metal into my life, and uh, I'm very <laughs> very excited. And my uh, my my DM is going to hate you so so much. Um, I'm sure there's a concentration where you can't cast it like all the time, but if you take a feat or something, I bet you could. Yep, I'm. Uh, uh, yep, I'm. I'm kind of. Yeah, I'm kind of into this. Kind of into this. Um, sweet. Okay, so we've we've come up with uh, with with this uh, with this battle master uh, artificer hybrid who, you know, again, sort of like kind of takes this like really useful middle lane between utility and fighting, which I really really dig. Um, if Haley Bray, mm -hmm. we wanted to lean purely into um and of course you know we could you know definitely pick spells and and you know all that stuff to really help reinforce this like utility swordsman uh kind of role uh that we've built out for him which would you know 100 percent include uh heat metal because uh, it's great uh but also snare which is in this campaign snare has maybe been my absolute favorite spell uh along with reduce and large um i yeah. absolutely so love them. Underrated. i've had three they're so underrated. Yes, we've had we've had so many um, dramatic. This should take two sessions encounters go very quickly because of snare. Um, God, I I absolutely adore it. Um, but let's say I want to uh, to back off of the frontline idea and just make this artificer. I'm down to even lose armor if if you know if if you want whatever journey you want to take me on, Kaylee. I will uh, I will follow you loyally and uh, and and bravely because you were wise. Uh, but if we wanted to lean like purely into healer utility buffs, uh, what would your approach be? Uh, I would probably dip into um, for heals. Heals, and I was like kind of actually looking at this because I don't normally I don't build like straight up healer characters all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would do armorer. I think it would probably be artillerist. Uh okay, cool. Or or battlesmith. Um 
Actually, just because like as far as buffs here. especially since you're playing with rogues your battlesmith you have that steed already ready that's your steel defender ready to go right also True, as yeah. a halfling you can use your steel defender as a mount which um if you watched uh sage ryan introduce me to the world of druids uh i, mm. I like me a, a character that can write a thing uh so yeah uh, and you can make the steel defender look idea. like whatever you want. Because it's it a might be. So in game early on, we um uh we we snagged these two polar bears uh that pull our wagon and our friends and, and hang out. And uh, because of spoiler things in Icewind Dale, we lost one of the polar bears. R.I.P. Strawberry. That was the polar bear's name. Uh, but imagine now. I can I can build my own <laughs> metal polar bear strawberry uh, to junior. avenge strawberry. Yes, I think strawberry they have to be junior. A medium, uh, they have to be a medium creature. I mean, it'll be a small medium, polar bear. Large. Little polar I mean, bear. Yeah, junior. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is this is junior. It's a it's a it's a it's a sh medium polar bear, uh, made yeah, of metal. So you can okay, totally cool. So we'll go ride that. If you want it yeah. as a halfling, uh, and, it's a medium creature. Oh. oh, he's gonna. Okay, cool. So we're gonna go battlesmith, uh, so that I can uh, ride into these battles, buffing and healing left and right. Uh, absolutely dig that very, very much. Because yeah. um, the um, the the steel defender can also, as a reaction impose dis it has it's like the protection style a fighting style for paladins they can like as a reaction impose disadvantage on another player or on another ally mm. um so like that's a really fun um buff the fact that it can engage an enemy which would mean that the rogues would have advantage if they were attacking which will give them sneak attack damage like that's a good buff super awesome that's super fun Love this. Now, uh, yeah. as we're as we're building, uh, sorry, I keep putting you on the spot with random questions. Um, but as we're building, sort of this like maximum buff slash healer artificer, um, I've got uh, this uh, this ability to take a feat, and right now that feat's alert. I think alert might be my very favorite feat. Um, it's a good one. Just for the. Just for the uh, the uh, initiative bonus alone, um, uh, everyone at my table just sort of rolls their eyes and knows that I'm going first at this point, uh, which which I love. <laughs> love that. Uh, but are there are there any feet? You know, uh, since we're we're going with uh, with that, we're going to turn this guy into Doctor Nert. Uh, are there any feats that you particularly like? Love that are really like healer or buff focused. The one that I always bring on is if for spellcasters is Warcaster, just because if you've got spells that require concentration, like Bless or something like that, that if you take oh, damage, true. you can roll an advantage. You can cast a spell as a reaction um, for, like, attacks of opportunity. Um, so that those are generally my my recommendations. I love, I love my Warcaster feed. I'm playing a cleric right now, and She's a bit. She she's primarily a buff, which is amazing because the amount of damage I can I can deal is wild as a cleric, but primarily a buff character. And uh, yeah, awesome. also if okay. you like heat metal, we're going with it. And I do. Um, and I do. Uh, I, I was very disappointed that I, I finally got that level. I was finally able to add heat metal to my spell list. I was so excited, and uh, we were in this um, this like. Uh, uh, orc fortress or goblins, maybe I gave one of the, one of the two, and um, their leader had this giant like gnarly metal helmet on. And uh, this is spoilers for Icewind Dale. I'll, I'll, I'll wave my arms when I'm done talking spoilers. Everybody, I'm sorry. I was so excited. I was like, oh, let's just crank heat metal and burn this dude's skull out of. It. I was so I was so excited. And then um, the character's like, wait, 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 and he like takes the helmet off, and uh, he's a, he's a gnome in disguise that's been like hiding out in the fort. And I was like. <laughs> Man, can I just nuke him anyway? I was so excited, so excited to finally just like heat metal, uh, heat metal this dude's day. 
it, it, it did not happen. Okay, and spoilers. Sorry, 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 sorry. Um, we're back, we're back, we're back. Okay, so we've taken our feet of Warcaster. Um, but what, uh, what class are we going to add? I might have to, looking here, I might have to change up some, um, I might have to change up some abilities too, because his, uh, right. his wisdom sucks for a cleric or a druid. I might do bard. Cause you yeah. can inspire people. You got the healing sure. spells. And if you just like really lean into the kind of bard that is more healery, the, um, again, your if you cast a homunculus or even your steed, like you can cast cure wounds from far away, which would be like a game changer. Oh, this is very you true. Can cast yeah, no, this is from far away. Yeah, no, this is super true. Okay, cool. No, yeah, you're right. This is kind of best of both worlds, and I don't have to go back and um, and completely so try to rebuild this guy. Yeah, yeah, from scratch. Uh, I could have two heat metals for no reason. I could have it as a bard. I could have it as an artificer. Sorry, I will. Uh, I'm going to get off of heat metals. Uh, heat metals job. Don't right do now. it. It's the best. Uh, <laughs> it is the best. But you know, you're totally right. Like here, here we go. Cure wounds, phenomenal. Um, uh, we've got uh, heroism in here as a as a level one, which is fantastic. Uh, and you know, even just like a lot of support stuff like sleep. Uh, blindness and deafness, calm emotions, uh, detect thoughts. There's a lot of really, really cool stuff in here as a bar. This is a really great idea, Kaylee. Yeah. It's, they're just such good utility casters. I love, I love a bard. And I think it, a lot of people, it's hard to play bards as beginners because it's same bards and paladins are my like two that I'm like, they're so great. But because you can do so many things with them, they're hard to play as new players. Um, but it's a really good way to learn all of the different ways to stretch your brain uh, when you're playing utility characters like that. And you could just decide what kind what kind of bard or pally or whatever they're going to be. Yeah. No, this is totally rad. Okay, look, we've got uh, uh, two, I think, really fantastic options, like really like kind of ultimate optimal useful options uh for multi-classing and artificer we have our we have our fighter that can also still like uh still still buff his uh his pals which if you have that kind of party where everyone else kind of has to hang back a little bit uh is really fantastic i think um just just summing up uh kaylee your idea of the of battle master really like opening up opportunities for uh for rogues and your ranged folks to really start taking a lot of advantage is really 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 cool so i absolutely love that that's a fantastic idea and then uh backing him up removing armor and uh and uh giving him that giving him that steed giving him the, hey look you gave me the gift of a robotic polar bear today Haley, and uh i appreciate that um but I, I think you're right. I think going bard for that like best of both worlds for healing and utility is uh, is a, is a super cool way to go. Especially in, in this case for me, where um, he's just not going to hit those prerequisites for a, for like a straight up cleric. Yeah, and so I don't think you need to be a cleric to heal. You just don't. Yeah. No. Yeah, I agree. And you know, honestly, you know. Uh, you know, getting back to the beginning where both of us were kind of like, you know, we're very like storytelly focused kind of folks. Like, I don't think Radwell Nurt's going to pray to anybody anytime soon. So like him being a cleric doesn't make a ton of sense. But him being like a uh, um, just a a, a meme worthy, uh, horrible bard in every sense of the in every sense of uh, everyone's current in, current interpretation of what a bard is. I, th that's a little more. A little more there so uh, no i i absolutely love this this is these are two really really cool builds thank you so much especially as an artificer too if he accidentally invents something that can like play music on his own if he's not necessarily already inclined to be a bard he's just found this new magical device or accidentally invented this new magical device like guardians of the galaxy style and can just play it for inspiration or use it just becomes a bard because he accidentally invented i love that the, yeah that maybe there's um or like i don't know yeah or even just like music. Uh, 
Yeah, like on his shoulders, like there's all these holes carved in his armor. So like the wind from the dale, uh, as it goes through, like just creates all these weird like wind chimey sounds, maybe um, uh, for him. So yeah, that that could be super fun. Or yeah, just straight up, he's like somehow. Look, if I can just say that, like, yeah, he has an arcane focus that cranks on a wheel. Like he can he can invent a record player. Yeah. I or think he's that's... just a just a motivational speaker, you know? He suddenly is just like, I'm shooting you on from the sidelines! Or I'm yes, yelling at yeah. you to get your job done! And now just it's inspirational for some reason! <laughs> <laughs> just full van down by the river. Uh, no, I, I absolutely love this. Haley, hey, thank you so much for uh, for coming on and uh, giving us some guidance on, uh, on multi-classing uh, and artificer. I learned a bunch. I thought about Mr. Radwell Nert in a bunch of different ways and how I could use them in a bunch of different ways. I really appreciate you. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, I'm everywhere on the internet lately. You can find me on Twitter at Hoppa Barbarian. That's true. my central hub. And it's uh, where I announce most of my stuff. There's lots of stuff going on. Um, I am the executive producer of table co tabletop content over at Pixel Circus. You can find me there on Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. for our Roll20 uh, sponsored Kids on Bikes stream you can find me on fridays at 6 p.m pacific time uh playing our comedy D, &D uh actual play fail save and saturdays as was just re-announced uh we are coming back this saturday at 6 p.m pacific time uh to uh maybe play some more princesses damsel's dice and everything nice is coming back for season two this saturday or campaign too. Love it. And it's it's a fantastic show. Uh if you guys like Disney, if you like D and D, if you like Kingdom Hearts, um, and if you just like a bunch of really fun performers just really like rolling with whatever punches chat throws at them. Uh which includes breaking out into uh into Disney uh musical numbers, which I really respect. Yes. Uh <laughs> because <laughs> that's not something that I can do at all. Uh, it's a it's a fantastic show. Can't recommend it enough. Kaylee, thank you again so much for coming on. And um, hey, thank you guys for watching. And uh, as usual, of course, you know, if your answer to any of this um, is, okay, cool, yeah, this all looks great, but uh, I don't have anyone to play D&D &D with, you absolutely do. Go to our Discord, go to our forums at dndbeyond.com. There's always people looking for a game. Uh, please go find yours. Uh, the you you should you deserve a game of uh, of D and D uh, and we will help you find it over there. Uh, absolutely hope that you go do that and uh, make sure you switch on dark mode because look how slick it looks. Will bring Radwell back up real quick. So look cool. at him. Look at it's, it's so, so pretty. pretty. It's so pretty. Oh gosh, so oh, it's just so oh, it's so silky. It's so silky it's so and light and dark. Oh my god, it's it so pretty. Me, it makes my eyes and my brain so happy. It's a good. Yep. Yep. It makes me go like this less. Uh, absolutely love it. That's uh, again, that's that's free to all users. So make sure that you guys uh, go in and uh, and switch that switch on that dark mode and uh, uh, no timeline or anything yet. But uh, I, I believe the next step is to is to make it site wide. Uh, so once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of each other. Be nice to each other. And uh, we'll see you next time right here at D&D Beyond. Thanks, everybody.